Good week this week, gents. Brilliant week. Another busy week where me and you went up to Hymer. Yes, I Great had day. my first Costa coffee. You had your first Starbucks tea mm -hmm. and McDonald's. And do you know what? I don't even like McDonald's. No. But there was no queue. And I've seen all the queues on the TV. I thought, no queue. Yeah. But I did get it for the kids. Not for, I got it for the kids, not for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, obviously. Apparently, obviously. Family, family man. <laughs> it was a good day at Heimer. We're going to show some videos on that uh, throughout the show. You, yourself, Gio? Really busy again. I think we've got some really good projects lined up, some really good visits lined up. Parker Hannafin, uh, High Spec Precision next week. Um, so really looking forward to that. Some new investments and some new technology. So yeah, it's yeah. And the podcast? The podcast is going really well. The Thursday night one this week um, is, is going to be very uh, special. So keep an eye out for yeah, I've that. I've seen lots of comments on it as well. Right, okay. So this week, Joe and I, as we've said, took a trip to Burnley to learn more about Hymer technology. And I got a little workout. Some people over lockdown have been getting very fit. I, on the other hand, have been doing a little bit of exercise, but didn't quite realise how many weights I should have been doing. Uh, because now um, Phil is going to show us on this uh, apparatus how tool balancing is so important. Um, so, Phil, explain to me what I need to do. <laughs> well, firstly, it's a practical demonstration of balancing, and it's made by our apprentices in Germany. So we show it to customers so that they can get and understanding a concept of what's happening with unbalance. So if it's okay, I'll just spin this now. So this is now a balanced flywheel. So yep. you can represent the machine spindle. You can feel if you rotate it, it's fairly easy to move. Yep. So now we will create a little bit of unbalance by moving the weight here and now we will spin it. And now you can feel really a direct yeah, resistance you can the weight distribution everything is yeah. just off off center and this is running maybe three four hundred revs so you can only imagine with twenty thousand what happens so ordinarily if you oppose the weight there and put one opposite on this side it should correct it yeah well actually it makes no. it makes it worse com completely worse yeah so if we just take this weight from this side here and and oppose it here do not get a close-up of my um now you can see we have it balanced. <laughs> yeah, completely balanced. Yeah. So that just gives an illustration, a practical example you can really feel in your hands what's going on with the balancing process. Yeah, and that's, that's basically exactly what the balancing machine, and we're going to see that shortly, is going to prove. Absolutely. It's the same measurement. So it's the radius times the mass. So th this is what we're correcting on the balancing machine. Right, Joe, Geo, I don't know if you'd be holding this up in the studio. I'm doing all right, aren't I? You're doing very Working well. hard. <laughs> yeah, it was a good workout. Um, right, so, Joe, how important is balancing your tool as part of the whole assembly? Well, I, I think it's crucial, Lindsay, but before we get on to that, Philly, it, it, we can't see it there, but he'd, he'd look good in Oasis, wouldn't he? See him with that mic stand. So it'd, be a, it'd be a pop, <laughs> you'd make a good pop star, Phil. But yeah, no, it's uh, tool balancing. You can see it there, that's running out now. But it, it, it's an integral part. Not enough people do it in the UK, to be honest. If, if your tool is out, even by only a few grams, it can, it can cause long-term issues with your spindle, your, your tool life's reduced by you know, 20%, maybe I know he was more. showing us figures of the figure of eight and how you're not using the tooling properly then, you know. Yeah, so that was with the boring bar. And if you imagine a boring bar by its, by its nature in a milling machine is off center, isn't it? Um, you imagine how much that's running out and it's actually, it's not doing a round hole. It's, it's, do, it's doing, like mm. you say, a figure of eight. And maybe we can share that on the screen, but it's doing a figure of eight. So you're, you know, when you're, you've got the go, no go gauge, Gio, and you, you're like yeah. rocking it one way and it doesn't quite go the other. That, that's because it's an oval or it's not perfectly round. figure of eight round. So what I'm getting at, it's very important. Yeah. Uh, in the UK, we don't adopt that enough, in truth. I know in Germany and other parts of the world, lots, you know, high percentage of people balance their tools. But I think what we've got in the UK, we've got this perception where you buy a balanced tool and you think that's it. Yeah. Whereas there's two issues with that. One, it may be balanced by design rather than physically balanced. And also, when you put a, a cutting tool, a collet, a nut, a sensor, anything on that, it's out of balance anyway. So before we come to you, Geo, uh, let's see. We've got a problem, but let's see the solution. Besides my um, lack of muscle strength, uh, Phil, um, the problem here is unbalanced tools. So how are you, Hymer, uh, going to rectify this problem? Well, first and foremost, this machine is, is a measuring machine. And what it's going to do is identify to us where the unbalance is and how we correct it. So we do it by screws, meaning adding weight, or we do it with eccentric rings, 
or we do it by drilling, which is never really the preferred method. Okay. So I'll just show you practically how the, how the machine runs. We've already done the first measuring run. Yeah. Uh, we'll just prick it up here from the second one. So you've turned it 180 degrees as well, haven't you already? Yeah, so the result we get is only the tool holder. And, and once complete, what's that going to do? You're going to move on to the screen now. And what's, what's, what's the screen showing us? So the screen is showing us green is good, yep. red is bad. So we have here a, a, a green result. We have a balancing grade G2.2. So it means that the tool holder is in tolerance and it's good to go. Uh, practically, that's all we need to do. We have here some balancing screws, which are weighted screws that we use to correct into the M6 threads in the outside diameter of the tool holder. So you found a solution to everyone's problems with, with regards to tool balancing. So what would you say to everybody out there? Well, send us your tool holders, any brand, no problem, send it here. We will check the unbalance and give you a report. If you're interested to protect your spindle life, your tool life and the surface quality, send us them and we'll check them. So Phil's got a challenge for anyone if they want their tools balanced. I mean, it's not going to accept hundreds, is it? Because he'll be there all day. But to give people an insight, maybe two or three tools or something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Interesting. Great videos. I think, you know, take Phil up on the offer. You know, mm. what have you got to lose? You know, it's an education and, and an education is key. Um, for me, uh, personally, I think it's all about eliminating vibration. Now, you've got to eliminate vibration. It was a perfect demo in the first video that you were illustrated and it looks like you were flexing their Working muscles out. there. <laughs> uh, but vibration is a, a killer, whether it's in the spindle or whether it's in the work holding. So if you can eliminate that vibration, what does that do for you? It, it kind of re, it reduces, um, you know, your, your cutting tool costs. It increases the longevity of your cutting tools. It increases the longevity of your spindle, but it also increases the accuracy of your workpiece, you know, better surface finishes. Yes. You can increase your feeds and speeds. Um, and like you mentioned, Joe, you're kind of getting the best out of that cutting tool. You can use it to its full capability and the machine mm -hmm. tool, more importantly, mm -hmm. to its full capability. I'm sure the return of investments, Joe. Massive. Uh, yeah, it must be massive. It, it depends how you calculate it, Geo, but in truth, and it depends how bad you are to start with. If yeah. you're buying cheap ER collet systems for, um, for milling, the, the payback can be literally a few weeks, literally a few weeks. Not only that, it's not only that, it's improved surface finish. Impro the big one's productivity. You're going to yeah, increase really productivity by 20% by using a balanced tool assembly. It doesn't have to be Heimer, by the way, a balanced tool assembly. Um, you, you, you know, you're 20% extra throughput. So if you've got even five or six machines, your payback is going to be very, very quick. Yeah. And if you finance the machine, I'm not saying you have to, but if you finance the machine, you're going to be, you're going to be, you're in profit straight away because your savings are bigger than your outgoing. Yeah, so. I've just got well, just one, oh. point, one last point. I mean, machine tools now, you, you're running the spindles at a lot faster feeds and speeds than you ever did before because yeah. the cutting strategies have changed. So this is more important than it's ever been. Well, exactly, Phil, and you talk about automation. If you haven't got that stable process, <laughs> sorry, if you haven't got that stable process, you know, it's, uh, you, you haven't got anything. But just one final thing. Oh. Think of it as your car wheel. If the weight falls off your car wheel, yeah. that's going maximum of 800 RPM, really. Yeah. Yeah. And you know how bad a car is yeah. when it's run out. It you, imagine, you times that by, well, you're talking 25,000 some spindles. And then you've got to pay, you're paying to replace your tires and everything. It's a hot topic yeah. and we could talk about it all day, but we can't because we don't have the time. Right, on the, on the subject of productivity, let's head over to Herco, where Paul is going to help us to keep those spindles turning. Automation is going to become a huge necessity for the UK. I'm here at Herco in High Wycombe and here is one of their answers to the automation element. Now this is a cobot. The idea behind this is it's interfaced currently to a TMAI two-axis lathe. But the demonstration that we'll see over the screen basically means that they're turning this two-axis lathe into a one-hit machining cell. So the component is being fed into the machine, it's then uh, being turned over outside of the chuck, it's being put back into the chuck, so you're almost uh, you know, doing the same as what you would do on a sub-spindle turning centre. The part is coming off complete. Now the interface between the, uh, the touch screen here and the, uh, the uh, machine control is absolutely seamless. They're very, very easy to program. They're also very easy to move. The beauty of this solution is not only the fact that here you can see uh, several components, but you can actually have trays here where you can actually 
you know, stack more and more. So depending on the quantity of components that you're doing, this will be adapted to suit. But the main thing is you can move this around. Within 30 minutes, this could be interfaced to another Herco machine, which means that you can not only keep this machine running unmanned, you could move this to a machining center, another lathe, total flexibility. Uh, automation is going to be key to the UK's uh, recovery and manufacturing. And this is a perfect example of how you can adopt it for a very affordable price. Another hot topic. See, we've got time limitations, gents. Right, this is fascinating. As soon as, uh, you know, Paul said, it's on wheels and how seamlessly it will work with all of the machines, you think you're just going to take it from here to there to there to there. And I think this is quite good, the first step into automation. Yeah? I totally agree. I think that um, with, with the cobots, they're different to industrial robots, obviously. However, first steps into automation, absolutely key. Paul mentioned consistency, and that is a word that is is very important you know it, it's a consistent process that you're achieving with automation but also achieving that unmanned running that we always mention robots and automation as met paul mentioned as well more more they are more of a necessity now than they've ever been mm -hmm. you know for, for competitiveness and to start, start reducing the cost per part yeah yeah for sure obviously the, all the people with robots with covid going on they're laughing aren't they because they, they haven't stopped they've just kept on going throughout but for me automation regardless of whether it's a cobot whatever it ends up being is absolute no-brainer now i know we've been talking for probably getting on for 10 years on this channel now about automation and please adopt it finally people are starting to listen um cobots are great there's very little or zero programming they tend to have teach modes where you literally put it in a position and teach it rather than program it. So to me, yeah, it's cheaper than a human being. The human being on the machine can be doing more skilled things. To be fair, when when we were watching the videos in between, you were like, I don't know why someone would not buy that. I just yeah. don't understand why yeah. they wouldn't. So and There's one yeah. last point I'd like to make, really. Just Again. sorry, uh, Lindsay, uh, but <laughs> I think that when people are buying any machine tool now, they shouldn't be buying a machine tool without considering what automation is going to go on that yeah. machine tool. This, whether it's high volume or low volume. Yes. There shouldn't be a misconception, it's just for high volume. Correct. Mm. This next interview is literally out of this world. And just to note, this was filmed before all of the social distancing was in place. I'm here with David Tor, who's the head of metrology at Reliance Precision. Now, on Swarf and Chips, of course, we always talk about Swarf and Chips, machine tools, metrology, everything. But I want to know about some of those exciting parts that you're making at Reliance. So, David, take it away. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the most exciting projects of the last sort of three or four years at Reliance has been really um, the design, test and manufacture of our own space stepper motor gearbox. Um, so, we were approached by a prime supplier. Um, trying to get more manufacturing into England, into the UK, um, so boosting the UK economy for, for space products. There's a very limited amount of people in the UK that are doing that. Um, so because Reliance do manufacture a product, they have a very good inspection capability. Um, we also do assembly and test. Um, we were a perfect fit for that type of project. So we've been working with the prime customer for around about two to three years on developing this gearbox and it, basically the gearbox is to position the solar arrays on a satellite uh, and these satellites are used for various different uh, projects um, so very small fine gears with 0.25 mod uh, gears so really small uh, gear teeth well I'm, I'm really impressed and is it up in space now yes it's been, it's been, been launched oh wow so we are love now it in the production phase of that so so it's being launched, did you say? It's being launched, yeah, yeah. Okay, and just one more question is, what are the accuracies? Because we hear about aerospace, we hear about automotive, oil and gas, but what are the microns that you're looking at when you're talking about space? Yeah, I mean, this product's probably around about your microphone size, um, and there's, there's tight limit bores in there that are produced uh, 10 microns. Okay. Um, but actually, what the biggest thing about the space industry is consistency of product. So it's making sure that you have a consistent product all the time and the process is correct. It's not very easy to get it back down to do a service on it. So they're looking for no. suppliers who are doing <laughs> things correct every time. No, you can't <laughs> first time because you can't really say, oh, can you just bring that product back down? There you go. A wonderful and interesting story from David Tor from Reliance. Thank you, David. No, thank you. 
I, and David Tor is so well known from Reliance Precision. Um, you know, w that was actually at Zeiss at the Alcom event, wasn't it, Gio? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a bit strange when we have to go back after the social distancing to get close up to people again, isn't it? All I'll ask when we do get back to, to some sort of norma normality, don't forget your deodorant, Lindsay. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Thanks. But in terms of measurement, how important is measurement? You don't know it's right without measurement, do you? Mm. I know your machine tool says it's correct. But, you know, it could be an error from the post of the machine, from the cam, the operator error. You need to measure it, don't you? Yep. It's not right. Uh, and obviously the things they were talking about, they're going into space. You wouldn't want that falling out of the sky, would you? <laughs> no, because so, that's what I said. I said, you can't exactly go get it back. You exactly. Know? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's incorrect. Go back and get it yeah. for sure as a recall. <laughs> so, yeah, no, for sure. Um, it, it's very important, Lindsay. Yeah. It's a fundamental part of the process. Mm. If it's not measured, you don't know it's right. No, exactly. Yeah. Gio? Some good jokes, by the way, today, Joe. I've yeah. enjoyed them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, absolutely couldn't agree with you more. I think uh, we, we visited uh, David um, a year or so back. Um, got a fantastic facility. They pride themselves on um, inspection and metrology. And I, and I think that it's not only the fact of, of qualifying that part and making sure it's, it's correct, uh, but, but with the complexity of parts uh, changing, with the emphasis on making parts faster, you need to be able to inspect them parts faster too. Yep. Um, so, to, 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 so you don't get a backlog. Um, so it all goes hand in hand. Again, like we mentioned with automation needs to be part of the process. Metrology needs to be looked at as part of the, the complete process. process rather than an individual entity. Yeah, definitely. Um, and David is a big fan of Sorf and Chips, so thanks, David. Thank you. Um, right, coming up towards the end of the show, um, anything else I think the vodcast you wanted to mention? Yeah, the vodcast on, on Thursday night seems to be really gaining a lot of traction it's something that, that uh, is new to MTD um, it's something that you know we do Swarf and Chips and, and we discuss you know what we think but it's a chance for the audience to give them uh, give them um, th their views yeah, absolutely, Gio. But, you know, my thing is, with all of this, you want interaction. You want people who are watching to stand up and say what they think. We're all learning. We're all out there. So are you. So are you. But if you want to write comments and you want to teach us something, the vodcast or, you know, the comments blocks here um, is, is a place for you to do that. And then that opens up conversation for us because we want the truth in the industry. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to, you know, be showcasing. So definitely eight o'clock Thursday nights on Facebook to be watching the vodcast, right? Perfect. Brilliant. Absolutely. There we go. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for watching the show. Don't forget to guess your cycle time challenge to win that Swarf and Chips goodie bag. Like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. As we always say, keep, keep those spindles, spindles turning. turning.